Hey, GED students. Oh, man, I saw um, a bunch of students discussing this problem up in a GED Facebook group, and I was like, I better get on this right away because you guys are all really confused. So let's take a look. Uh, notice the language here. It says, which expression is equal to the expression? And then we see an algebraic expression for x minus 2 times the quantity 3x minus 9. And I have to warn you guys of something. And it's that um, everybody mistook this for a different kind of problem. Every single uh, student who was looking at this in the group thought, oh my goodness, look, an x I should solve. I should figure out what X is equal to. And I'm sorry to break it to you. You cannot solve this. You cannot solve expressions. You can only solve equations. Um, I would have had to have an equal sign and some more information over here in order to figure out what X is equal to. Well, then another student asked, well, did they tell you the value of X? So they wanted to evaluate this knowing the value of X, but the student wasn't given a value of X either. So what does that mean? If we can't solve, if we don't know what X is, what can we do? The only thing we can do in a case like this is simplify. Simplify. Simplifying is doing the forwards math obeying the operation signs that we see, doing whatever we can. You always simplify um, I shouldn't say always, but you can uh, always use the order of operations to help you gu help guide you through the simplification process. So the order of operations says do groupings first, then exponents, then any multiplication and division, then any, any addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's kind of go through this. The first thing I do see here is I do see a grouping. 3x minus 9 is in parentheses, but unfortunately... I can't deal with this grouping right now. This grouping, there's nothing I can do there. Why? We're only allowed to add and subtract like terms or the same kinds of things, x's with x's, plain old numbers with plain old numbers. I can't take a plain old regular nine away from three x. I can't do that subtraction. And so it is impossible for me to do this grouping. And so I will skip this step. That was the only grouping I saw. Next step would be exponents. That would be any little floating numbers or those radical checkmark houses. I don't see any of those. So the next step is to do any multiplication or division. So I do see some multiplication. What I see is the number two is shoved up against this parentheses, or the number negative two, I should say, is shoved up those against those parentheses. And you might be saying, Kate, that's not a negative two, that's a minus two. Yes, when I'm thinking of it in the case of adding and subtracting, I call it minus two. But right now I'm multiplying and dividing, I'm gonna call that a negative two. Okay, so what does this mean? That means this negative two is multiplying by everyone in that parentheses. So that'll be the first math I'll do. I'll distribute or pass out the multiplication. So negative two times three x is negative six x. And negative two times negative nine, a negative times a negative is a positive, and two times two is 18. So that's what I got from that part of the problem. Uh, but don't forget there was a, another term in this expression that I haven't touched yet. The 4x from above will drop down. And so now I have 4x minus 6x plus 18. I finished my multiplication and division. It's time to do any addition and subtraction. Once again, I would remind you that we can only add and subtract like terms. X's with X's, Y's with Y's, X squareds with X squareds, numbers with numbers. You group before you add and subtract. So here I see some like terms. That is some number of X's. It's four X's. And here's another number of X's, negative six X's. Since those are like, they're both X terms, I can go ahead and add or subtract. So if I start at the number four, uh, so there's zero, there's four, and go backwards six, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to end up at negative two. So I get negative two, and what was I adding and subtracting? I was adding and subtracting x's, so that's how many x's I'll have, negative two x's. Now this plus 18 is just a plain old number it has no one to combine with, so it'll just drop down, plus 18. 
Now this is technically a finished final answer. Negative two plus 18 is right, but they're kind of trying to trick us in their problem. You can notice that that selection is not here. Now don't be the foolish student who goes, hey, B looks closest to mine. Look at this, negative two X plus 18, negative two X minus 18, it must be B. No, 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 they're trying to fool you, watch out. Adding 18 and subtracting 18 are not equivalent. So you say, okay, well then, which one is right, Kate? It actually turns out A is right. Let me show you why. The order of terms don't matter. So we have the negative 2x written first and the plus 18 written second. You could actually write these in the opposite order. You could write the 18 first. Bring his sign with him. He's a positive 18. And you could write the minus 2x second. Bring his sign with he, him. He's a minus 2x. Now I hope you guys know that when a number is positive, we don't have to brag about it. So this plus sign out front is not very important. And we can see that indeed negative 2x plus 18 is equivalent, equal to 18 minus 2x. And this is why I said to the students there that this problem had to be a multiple choice problem because the way it's worded, which expression is equal to this expression, there could be many different right answers. And so I wanted to make sure that I had multiple choice answers because I knew that my answer wouldn't necessarily look exactly like that one. It would just definitely be equivalent or equal to the answer. Okay, great. Again, this is the final answer. I cannot do anything else in this problem. There is no more simplifying that I can do. I cannot solve because I do not have an equation. I cannot down, bring it down to one number because I do not know what X is. This was all the simplifying uh, that I could do. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.